thing's got all kinds of problems. Do you miss it yet? Oh man, it's definitely like nostalgia. What I'm wondering is who the heck milled that beam? The thing's terrible. Right? Who made that? It's funny, we're bringing this beam over and all I see is that it's like really fat in the middle <laughs> and really skinny on the ends. And I could see it a mile away. Yeah. This was, I think, the very first beam that we milled and we had no idea that the sawmill was so finicky with calibrations on, you know, a 25 foot beam. Turns so out. I think we have our work cut out for us. Heck yeah. When I first looked at this, I thought, my gosh, it bowed, like from poor stickering or something. <laughs> I'm looking at it, it just gets kind of fatter and other stuff at the other end down there. Can you see it? So the next project in getting ready for our sit panels is building the exterior braces that will support the eave and the gable uh, overhang. We have, just so happens, from our very first endeavors as Sawyers, <laughs> some very poorly milled beams, which came in handy for setting up the timber frame workshop, and we stickered them thinking we'd maybe use them to build a tractor shed or something. By some dumb luck, they're approximately the dimension that we need for the exterior braces and it has a story behind it. If you remember, a while back, our neighbor gave us some trees on his property in exchange for cutting them out of his way. They were larch trees or larch tree. I don't remember how many they were. Anyways, it's what we used for one of the posts in our garage. This is the same exact tree. So it's a different species than what our timber frame is, but it should weather and look about the same. Maybe what makes this tree the most memorable is this is the one where we nearly killed ourselves. But we had this long trailer with a come along attached to it and we had these large timber ramps to pull this green larch tree up onto this trailer. I think I was holding one of the uh, PVs and you were holding the other PV and then I needed to hold the tree while you ran around and reset the come along. In haste, Alyssa tripped on the ramp, which normally she's like ninja and like right back on her feet. And this time, no, face Bam. down. So I'm standing there holding this tree with the PV and Alyssa's face down on the rocks. She's like in the path of the tree. If I let it go, it rolls over the top of her and I can't move to help her. And she's kind of like got that like little Tweety Bird starry cartoon thing going on around her head. That was this tree. I don't have the plans in front of me. I think you have those. Shelter Institute was kind enough to draw up another of their cut sheets, which are how we built the timber frame also. It's a piece by piece breakdown of the braces. So today, well, we're gonna see how far we can get. We've got some afternoon appointments. So we're hoping that we can get the timbers over to the sawmill and resaw them down to the dimensions we need. And maybe we can get them planed. That would be a pretty good day. Uh, if not, we can keep moving forward. So what we need to do is we have, I think three pieces is all we need to resaw. But if my math is right, that would probably take all day. There's a good chance it'll take all day from my memory. <laughs> if there's one four letter word I've learned while running this sawmill, it is calibrate. The biggest challenge we had, I would say by far, in milling our timber frame accurately was the way our sawmill is founded on the ground. It, when you roll these big beams over and drop logs and things, the saw gets miscalibrated very easily. And in order to get this precision that we want, we're gonna be spending a lot of time probably adjusting the sawmill and very little, little, very little time making sawdust. <laughs> Man. Terrible. Yeah. Well, it's an eight by 10 down here. Really? <laughs> and it's seven and three quarters by nine and a half down there. This thing's got issues in every every dimension. Okay. Is it salvageable? Yeah, so what we need to try to do is get a flat side. And when we get a flat side, then we can work from that. So we spent the past hour doing calibrations. It was, yeah. it was pretty out of calibration, but... It was... Just Everything we dealt with with the timber frame except for there's no time crunch. So yeah, we've kind of we're gonna have to make some as-built changes because this timber was just a train wreck. It, it had like 
it was a wedge shape on one side and then it was bowing and and it just had every bad thing you can imagine in a timber so in the end that perfect timber that we all talk about when we're doing milling is going to be a lot smaller than an 8x8 we're hoping to get a 7x8 that won't change the function of the piece but we're going to have to make some some alterations to right. the cut sheets it's these braces aren't really structural yeah so it's okay that we lose an inch the other option is to mill up a perfectly good tree yep. when we have all this waste sitting around so this is what it looks like when you use what you have yeah i mean we could there's a bunch of four four foot long tree trunks back there behind us we could spend hours oh, yeah. milling all that garbage up right but that would be a whole weekend instead of a day so yeah we're we're getting close it's been a good refresher kind of forgot how to get the timber to be square and how to get the mill to be calibrated yeah, totally a refresher for me it's been like yeah deja vu in fact the generator running over there and the air compressor running over here literally have just like a mild ptsd right and your like respirator and the respirator and the hard hat and the sun just i don't know mild mild ptsd <laughs> all right let's try to get this thing done unfortunately we're gonna have to wrap this shindig up in about an hour but hopefully we could get some work done this evening We were kind of in doubt whether this was fur or larch, and I'm very confident it's larch now. Oh yeah. Hot diggity dug. Mm, that's nice. Gaius would be proud. Is tight, it won't let the leg go down, right? Yep. See, this leg's not very tight. We made it back from town. Alyssa's calling lights. We found when we set the lights up early, there's no panic. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Try to get this done before the sun sets. Uh, Trying to be proactive here. Yeah. So we can finish something today. Yeah, it'll feel good to get that far on this project. We're gonna try our hand at planing this timber and see how it turns out. One of the concerns that we have is that because this guy sat in our yard for a year, whether it's unworkable. We doubt it. Our thinking is that at most it may have dried about an inch on all sides. 
and that the center may still be somewhat workable. The planer will tell us that pretty quick. Oh yeah, portable light. Haven't regretted that a day since we got it. It's like a football stadium light. Are you gonna let me run the planer? Or do you still uh, run the planer? What kind of, can you we work together? Got, yeah, you haven't run, run it on the beam yet. You planed that whole thing. I know, I know. I'm I let you. I let you I'm, run the sawmill. I'm totally a planer hog. <laughs> did run it. Okay. Remember, we were running the planer and the air compressor off the Honda. That's right. And it kept dying. We should try that instead of this. Really? Because it's quieter? so freaking loud. All right, macro lens. Let's see what we got. That's pretty. It's pretty not right there. <laughs> that is the size of a pencil eraser. Yeah, the eraser on a regular pencil. Oh. I really like this lens. We should use this lens more often. Right. Wow. Never mind. This this lens fails. It went out of focus uh -oh. by a mile. Uh oh. Oh, it's. Oh. I also forgot that we have lights in our garage. Why are we working out here in the dark? We are such clowns. We just, like oh, no. forget things so fast. Oh my goodness. Sorry, Milwaukee's. You've been replaced. Holy mackerel! You can actually see. This is roughs on, and that's planed. Whew, so pretty. This machine has earned its keep around here. Yes. Are you ready for a rotate-a-roo or not well, yet? See this spot right here? It's still a little rough, so would you say hit it again? Just that spot uh, or what? Like it looks like there's a little on this side. I mean, what did you take off? Like um, a 16th? I'm between a 16th, a 16th and a 32nd. Second. So yeah, like. You can try a 32nd, but in uh, the end you have to decide thickness versus finish. Or you could always rotate that to the inside or outside where it won't be visible. One of these faces we could not even plane. Right. Because it's gonna go against the house. I just plane it all to be safe. Like doesn't, we're not under a time crunch. That true. gives us discretion. Yeah, true. Okay. Um, I think I wanna take that one more pass. Okay. And uh, yeah, I want it to look really good, so. Here's how you adjust the depth of the planer. And it's really easy to go one way on the dial, but not the other. <laughs> Alyssa knows all the little nuances. Oh, I of know. This I know its personality. Wow. You got to do this while I was running the sawmill? Oh, yeah. It was so satisfying. I'm sure it's really satisfying for like the first two. And then it's just a lot of work. Wow. That thing's really good. Oh, she's heavy. That back goes deceptive gonna look so good yeah our whole house not just this yeah we made it that's why it'll look good that's why did somebody get planer shavings in your gloves yeah i left it over there oh see like Who did it's that? all the way down to the fingertips that was really mean I think we forgot to set the depth because I changed it to a 30 second. Oh, yeah. So wow. we need it's to like change it. A yeah. So you said halfway between a 16th and 30 seconds, like a sweet spot. It's pretty good. A Kay. 16th is actually quite a bit. Yeah. 30 second, not, not enough. good for impatient people. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to play in like a half an inch. Roger that. Wow. 
I think this is gonna have to be a blemish and get cut off. We've already kind of accounted for that, but this kind of came to light after we started milling into it. I, I could see it on the butt, but now that we cut into it, it's definitely not gonna work. In a perfect world, your timbers are pretty dang close to perfect when they come off the sawmill, but there's always inconsistencies and stuff like this. You can see it wasn't planed, and our rough estimate is that this right here might be about an eighth of an inch lower than right here. So to plane this off, we'll have to plane the entire beam down an eighth of an inch. Or we could maybe get a little handheld planer and plane just this spot here. But because we have six supports, three on the front and three on the back, we figure we can put this on the back in the corner where ain't no one gonna see it. Or when we cut it, we can then plane it so we don't have to plane the whole timber. But to me, this is timber framing. And even with our frame, we had a lot of decisions like this. Where do we put the blemished beams? And there's always blemished beams. Well, like we hid some of them behind, like in the, the outside faces, which are gonna be covered by sit panels. Right. We actually went through and selected that. That's a big part of kind of choosing mm -hmm. where your posts go. You don't just make 12 posts and put them all up. You have to really kind of look at the character and right. think which one of these do I want to look at for the rest of my life. Some people might notice that there's a really big crack running down pretty much the entire length of this and you might wonder if that's okay or if it threatens the structural integrity of the timber and it actually doesn't. However, when we first fell this tree, we did put anchor seal on the ends, which I don't know if you can see it right now. Pretty dark. But the anchor seal and the wax seals this off so that less moisture escapes and the, so there's less checking. Every beam in our house is gonna check. Anybody who thinks that timbers don't check hasn't seen a timber. And <laughs> you'll hear it and it'll probably scare you to death the first couple of cracks you hear. We've heard that, yeah, your house is gonna pop and crack for the several years as these cracks all widen and the timber dries out. I think yesterday when we were up working on the sill plate extensions, I think I actually heard, cracks. I think I heard the frame <gasps> cracking. Pretty good. Oil, or do you want to deal with oil tomorrow? I kind of want to make some cuts. Is it premature? What do you mean make some should cuts? We, should we oil it after we cut all the timber framing? Gosh, you know what? Maybe we, maybe we should, no, I don't think so. I think we should do it after, maybe. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I think we should cut all the joinery, then oil That's it. That's probably wise. Otherwise we'll, yeah, be like, I don't know, struggling, I guess, I don't know. Jesse is gonna do one squaring cut on the, <gasps> Jesse's gonna do one squaring cut on the end and then I think we're gonna call it a night. And hopefully we can work a day or two without any interruptions. I think there's a chance that tomorrow we can get the rest of the timbers milled and planed. And if we're really lucky, we might be able to go a little further than that.